where we'll now finally get to talk about the theorem that we have been looking forward to for a very long time. Like many fundamental theorems of linear algebra, it comes in the form of a matrix decomposition. It's our third decomposition following the LU decomposition and the eigenvalue decomposition. And you will see that this theorem is very much related to the eigenvalue decomposition. It states that any matrix whatsoever can be represented as a product of an orthogonal matrix and a symmetric matrix. And that furthermore, all of the eigenvalues of the symmetric matrix are non-negative. So if there is any flipping going on, it goes into the orthogonal matrix. But that's just the convention. Now, of course, this theorem has an unequivocal geometric interpretation. It states that any linear transformation whatsoever is a combination of scaling along orthogonal directions and only by non-negative amounts, so there's no flipping going on here, followed by a rotation with a possible reflection thrown in. So that's the theorem, and in many ways, it's one of the highlights of all of linear algebra. So in this video, I'll talk about the reasons why I think this theorem is so great. And then in the following video, we'll actually prove this theorem. And as we're proving it, we'll actually derive an algorithm for constructing these matrices Q and S. And you will see that both the proof and the construction of the matrices is not at all technical, but rather very illuminating. But for now, let's talk about why I think this theorem is so special. It's very special in a number of ways. First of all, it's really the pinnacle of representing very complicated things represented by this symbol as combinations of very simple things. This is a mathematical symbol for union, but we're using it in the sense of combination. So we're representing very complicated things, arbitrary linear transformations, as, as a combination of very simple things among all linear transformations, which can be arbitrarily complicated. We have identified two classes of rather simple linear transformations, and those were orthogonal transformations or length-preserving transformations, and symmetric transformations or orthoscaling transformations. Now, both of these are rather simple. These are just rotations and reflections, and these are just scalings along orthogonal directions. So it's rather remarkable that an arbitrarily complicated linear transformation can be represented as a combination of these two rather simple linear transformations. It's really hard to believe that that might be true. And you will see that not only is it true, it's also very easy to show. So this is one way in which this theorem is very beautiful, very important, and very special. It is representing complicated things as combinations of simple things. And it does it to such an extent that it's actually very unexpected. Now, there are only two ideas in mathematics that I can think of that eclipse this theorem in terms of representing complicated things as combinations of simple things. One such example is Newton's statement that any function is actually a polynomial even if you may need to use an infinite number of terms. Now that was Newton's approach to calculus. The second example of such an idea is Fourier series. Similar to what Newton stated in terms of all functions being polynomials, Fourier stated that all functions are actually sums of sines and cosines, even if you need an infinite number of terms. So those are similar theorems, although their applications are very different. We'll talk about Fourier series at length in this course. And in my opinion, they both eclipse this theorem in uh, aesthetics and maybe even importance. But nevertheless, this theorem can very much hold its own as far as representing complicated things as combination of simple things is concerned. Moving on, this theorem is remarkably universal in the sense that any matrix even rectangular matrices have such a decomposition. And as I mentioned, this theorem is related to the eigenvalue decomposition. And as you know, with the eigenvalue decomposition, 
a number of things could go wrong. Number one, the matrix could be defective. It could have complex eigenvalues or a combination of both of those problems. Now, nothing like that can occur as far as this decomposition is concerned. This decomposition is available for any matrix A whatsoever, including later on rectangular matrices. We'll have to talk about very carefully what orthogonal means in the case of rectangular matrices. But nothing can go wrong with this theorem. It's available, this decomposition is available for all matrices A whatsoever. And furthermore, the matrices Q and S are unique. So that's speaking to the universality of this theorem, which is quite remarkable. Finally, on the algebraic properties of this theorem. I think one of the sources of beauty of this theorem is its geometric interpretation, stating that any linear transformation is scaling followed by a rotation, to put it simply. Now, even though it's a very straightforward, very clear geometric statement, I would have no idea how to demonstrate it geometrically, and I would have no idea how to come up or even describe the orthoscaling transformation and the rotation for any given linear transformation. Now, someone like Descartes probably could come up with a geometric proof of this theorem, Euler, of course, but I wouldn't even attempt it. On the other hand, the algebraic proof and construction that we'll discuss in the next video is completely straightforward. It almost writes itself. It's nearly trivial. There's actually absolutely no way to even miss this theorem. Anyone who thinks about transformations long enough comes across this theorem on his or her own eventually. There is really no mystery. It's completely straightforward. And it's just a remarkable example of algebra and, geomet of ge excuse me, of algebra and geometry working together. Now, yes, it's an algebraic statement in terms of matrix products, but it's also a purely geometric statement which has a completely algebraic proof. So this is an example of algebra helping geometry. Algebra taking geometry, uh, taking over for geometry, where geometry hits a roadblock in terms of proof at constructing the actual linear transformations. So this is a fantastic example of algebra and geometry, trading mutual forces and really becoming more powerful together than either one had ever been on its own. And finally, on the importance of this theorem. And this theorem is remarkably important and has a remarkable number of very important applications, including the Google search. This theorem is the foundation of the singular value decomposition, SVD, that we'll discuss later in this course. We'll talk a little bit about it shortly, but then most of it later in the course after we've talked about inner products. And of course, the SVD, the singular value decomposition, is one of the most important decompositions of linear algebra. It helps extract the essence of the matrix A. Sometimes in applications, you come up with million by million matrices A, and you're looking at this million squared number of entries, and you don't know which ones are important on what that matrix is really saying. Well, by constructing the singular value decomposition of that matrix, which is always possible because this decomposition is always possible for any matrix A, you come up with a decomposition that gives you a straightforward recipe for extracting, for extracting the essence of the matrix, for identifying what's important about the matrix, for determining what the matrix really is saying is as few the number of pieces of information as possible. So that's one of the important class of applications to look forward to. So this is in a nutshell is why I think this theorem is so important. So I now look forward to proving it in the next video, which will be very simple. And like I said, very illuminating. And for a given matrix, coming up with an algorithm for constructing the matrix Q and the matrix S. So, Let's go ahead and figure out how to do that.